Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jessie Leons. This edition's top stories, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney encourages students to aim high as the new academic year opens. The Rehabilitation Center Turning Point raises concern over substance abuse amid the challenges of COVID-19. And rural women farmers take the lead on buy local, eat local. Students of Miku South that performed outstandingly in the common entrance examinations have been rewarded by Parliamentary Representative Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney during an awards ceremony. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney made good on his promise to the top common entrance achievers of his constituency, delivering 24 laptops and tablets for handover at the Miku South Top Achievers Award Ceremony. The 2020 top performer from each primary school in the constituency received a laptop. They are Keegan Samuel of the Blushar Combined School, Joshua De Rose of De Rousseau Combined, and T. Roche's Angeline Baptiste, who attained the highest score in the constituency. 18 Alcatel tablets were awarded to the next six top performers from each of the three schools. I just want to say to all of you that you've become leaders. You've become examples in your community. And every day you need to hold your head high and be very proud about what you achieved. And I certainly wish I was your age because the opportunities for you are going to be endless. Your life is no longer confined to St. Lucia. We need to live in a global economy. And these computers that we've given you are now the portal to a whole new world. So learn to use them well, take care of them, and enjoy, and continue to do the outstanding work that you're doing. On behalf of your parents and your teachers, congratulations. The 2019 Common Entrance top performers from each primary school in the constituency also received their laptops during this ceremony. Principal of the Blanchard Combined School, Merle Langlier Emmanuel, thanked Honorable Chastney for equipping the outgoing students with the devices given the new modality introduced by the Ministry of Education. So on behalf of the principals, staff, parents and students of the Tiroche Combined School, the Derisot Combined School, and the Blanchard Combined School. I say thank you to our Honorable Prime Minister for donating the electronic devices that we know are so necessary at this time. This is especially so as schools intend to utilize the blended learning approach in teaching. I also want to thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, for the donation of hand sanitizers face masks, and thermometers. This will support us in implementing and managing our plans to ensure the safety of all our staff and students in this COVID-19 environment. Principals, our load has become lighter as we are now better equipped to implement those plans. I am certain that our anxiety level has gone down a notch. And let me tell you, I went by MNC to price one of those thermometers and they told me $150. And I was like, wow, how do I manage to get two, three of them? And now we are getting them. So we appreciate, we appreciate that. Mrs. Jody Chastney, mother of Honorable Alan Chastney, also donated book bags, lunch bags, and other school supplies to the three schools for underprivileged students. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leons reporting. The 48-year-old national who was found unresponsive in her room at one of the government quarantine sites on Sunday, August 23, 2020, is still being managed at the Owen King EU Hospital. However, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George says her condition is not linked to COVID-19. In fact, St. Lucia has recorded yet again a 100% recovery of COVID-19 patients. There have been a total of 20 six confirmed cases of COVID-19 and zero deaths to date. The last case recorded on Tuesday, August 18, 2020, was of a 32-year-old female who traveled from the United States. She has recovered fully, both clinically and with negative tests. As we continue to open new sectors such as education, 
the public is advised to take personal responsibility to protect themselves and their family. We continue to increase surveillance to reduce the risks such as the illegal entry at the borders, breaches to home quarantine, and non-adherence to protocol. The public is advised that protocols are still in place. These include the use of face masks in public, maintaining a safe physical distance from others, and to avoid mass crowd gatherings. We appeal to everyone to continue supporting our national efforts to minimize the threat of COVID-19 on our island. The five respiratory clinics remain open to facilitate anyone with respiratory signs and symptoms, and the 311 hotline is also available where concerns and questions can be addressed. We continue to advise on the importance of maintaining the standard recommendations for infection prevention and control which include regular hand washing with soap and water or the use of alcohol-based hand sanitizers, also to cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. A total of 5,542 tests have been conducted to date. And meanwhile, health officials are urging St. Lucians to reach out for help if they are finding difficulty in coping with the pressures of life which have been further compounded by COVID-19. Roger Vara Lawrence tells us more. Given COVID anxieties, officials are concerned that sections of the public may rely on alcohol and drugs to cope. As such, an appeal is being issued to individuals confronted with alcohol and drug abuse to seek help at the Turning Point Rehabilitation Center. Director Robert Huggins outlined the cultural and social context for the rate of alcohol use in our society. He said that the influence begins at an early age when children associate alcohol with adulthood and festivity. As a young person, uh, let's say you're three years old or something, so you, you, uh, you have your birthday party, your friends and family over. Usually you have your, your parents have their own section of the party where they have their adult drinks and whatnot. You know, um, so we grew up with this mentality almost. We see it every day at every occasion that when adults get together, they have alcohol. When we get older and as we start to go out, we start to demand alcohol as part of our experience in order to say that we have a good time, right? And when things start to go bad, you know, we say, well, this is what we need for things to go right. So we turn to it. And I'm not saying this is the only reason that person said that, but it's one of the major concerns that we have in our society. According to Huggins, alcohol abuse disorder continues to dominate cases registered at the facility, followed by marijuana and crack cocaine. Um, those are the three that we typically get. Um, it's very rare that we get anything beyond that. No many people come for tobacco treatment, but when they come, they might, you know, they might also smoke tobacco, they, but they, nobody presents to be treated for tobacco, more or less. And occasionally you get somebody who might um, use the, the drugs like uh, methamphetamines or and these things, but those are very rare. But to be perfectly honest, it's, it's strictly alcohol, number one, then you have your marijuana use disorder, and then your um, crack cocaine use. The Turning Point Rehabilitation Program is based on a biopsychosocial model with a spiritual element. Hugging says operations have been adjusted due to the pandemic, but are still accommodating those who need rehabilitation. Unfortunately, now, because of the COVID protocols and whatnot, the size of our compound, we have to limit the numbers that we can take in at any one time. So we only take it in four clients at a time, and we have a bit of a waiting list as persons have to wait for a space to open up to be able to come in. The Turning Point Rehabilitation Center is located at the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. For more information, call 453-1087. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. The recently held local farmers market featuring rural women farmers has been hailed a success. The farmers market was held in Miku under the campaign slogan, Buy Local, Eat Local. The government of St. Lucia, in partnership with the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, has provided support to the Rural Women Farmers Network. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, Sustainable Development, and Parliamentary Representative for Miku North, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, welcomes the strides made by women farmers. They've got chocolates, honey, locally made condiment, uh, watermelon, mangoes. I did help myself to some mangoes. But more importantly, these women have proven that over the years, they've been able to sustain themselves through farming and through agro-processing. 
we continue to work very closely with them and the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations is continuing its efforts to secure resources to assist our rural women. And you'll be hearing more about this in the coming weeks. We're basically trying to get farmers to come together to promote local eating for the public and healthy eating as well. We would get farmers with um, local produce like watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, also agro-processed goods as well. We the farmers in St. Lucia, we can produce so many things. We need to see that the things we are importing, most of them we can produce them right here in St. Lucia. This will help to boost up our economy. I think it's a very good initiative. Um, as we know, we're supposed to support local. And with all this COVID pandemic, with the COVID um, pandemic, we know that sometimes we, not, we may not be able to import all that we want. So supporting local should be the way to go. And it will allow our monies to remain right in the country. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor informs residents of Jetwin and all road users of the closure of the Jetwin Road to facilitate construction of a triple circular culvert crossing. The road will be closed from Thursday, September 3, 2020 for a period of three weeks. Residents and all road users are encouraged to use the Grace Road in Giroux as an alternative route. Drivers are particularly urged to travel with due caution as this bypass road is narrow. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor apologizes for any inconvenience caused. And one other public announcement, the Accountant General's Department has informed that the Viewfort Subaccountant's Office, presently housed at the Shitoli Building at Beanfield Viewfort, will be closed from Tuesday, September 1st, 2020 to Friday, September 4th, 2020. This closure is to facilitate the relocation of the office to new premises on the second floor of the Pilty Building on New Dock Road, Viewfort. Any assistance required during this closure can be obtained from the main office at the Diana Building, Castries, at 468-3900. The Denry Subaccountant's Office also at 453-3325 or the Miku Subaccountant's Office at 454-4353. The Accountant General's Department regrets any inconvenience this may have caused and looks forward to resuming service on Monday, September 7, 2020. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Acquayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tan Chessy, Monsieur Madame, Department of Kinivas Cosability, Reformation and Gouvernement Sutlesi, GIS. Et Television National Pia NTN Capusato Novel a Creole Pusato Primus Hutchinson. Cette ci j'ai enregistré un total de 26 cas maladie corona qui j'ai confirmé déjà. Dernier cas qui était pas ça enregistré c'était le 18 août 2020 et c'était une madame 32 ans de l'âge qui était voyagé sorti l'Amérique. Présentement ou à Poca Moutriki, et j'ai trouvé des raisons et des avec tout résultat de, qui sorti négatif. Selon le rapport du département de santé, tous ces résultats de cas corona qui étaient enregistrés, j'ai trouvé des raisons et pour les présents, c'est aussi pour qu'on enregistre pièces de la mort à cause de corona. En total, de 5 542 tests à fait. Pour madame, pour madame là, qui 48 ans de l'âge, qui ont été découverts en Chambly par l'intérêt à danser l'institution quarantine gouvernement 
côté de perte de connaissance. Ça, c'était le 23 août 2020. Individu ça là, à l'hôpital Owen King, toujours, et condition, pani, pièce, connexion, et puis maladie corona. Le département de santé a demandé le public là pour considérer, pour accepter la responsabilité personnellement, pour protéger le corps et aussi la femme, qu'on paye à la vie ouvert le secteur 9 de l'éducation. Le département de santé a fait le public là savent que vous avez continué pour agrandir l'effort pour réduire à ce risque de maladie corona pour protéger et tenir la sécurité pour pour les gens qui pas entré en pays illégalement, pour les gens qui pas croisé la quarantaine avec l'autre protocole de maladie. Le département de café public la savent que tout protocole en place toujours et pour vous continuer à porter masse à ce sujet en public, tenir six pieds de distance entre les et pour ne pas combler en grande quantité. Le département de café a un grand appel pour tout le monde si pour pour abattre la maladie corona en cette liste. La ville a mis et puis ça va avec le service sanitaire, couvert bouche ou le ou et bien on va installer. La fève de dengue, pas ni ouest pe pour personne, et pe qui mounouye en la terre, et bien cette ici, ou en ouis pour trouver dengue de pour pas prendre précaution, et bien ou pas suivre ces wèg qui a protégé ou contre maladie sala. C'est chef officier de l'environnement, c'est le CIPA Karagnan, qui fait observation sur ça. Comme pays, j'ai trouvé un haut risque de la fièvre dengue. Dengue qui a venu par un mengue, qui connaît qu'on est des Égyptiens, là, il prend un de l'eau propre qui est exposé en public. Qui a été décationné, qui a joué au quartier B, qui l'a joué. Les maïgouins ont fait, les gens qui ont pris le pays là, c'est les gens qui ont mordé. Ce que nous avons dit, tout en cette liste, nous avons un risque qui a trappé la maladie dengue fever. Donc nous tous ne pouvons faire ça, nous pouvons faire ensemble. Nous avons une commune pour nous garder après une autre, pour nous assurer que nous travaillons ensemble, pour nous attirer ces places-là. C'est ce que nous avons fait. Nous avons des places qui ont été bloquées. Nous avons détruit ces places-là. Et c'est un travail que nous faire ensemble. Pièces. Même le gouvernement n'a pas sa venir faire ce bail ça là-bas. Nous devons faire ensemble. Nous devons protéger corps nous et protéger l'autre monde. Ragnanan a aussi encouragé les membres publics pour eux même prendre toutes les précautions qui sont nécessaires en place pour que vous restez et en cas de même. Nous devons encourager les gens pour servir net mosquito, net maïgouin, pour protéger corps et leurs soins, pour empêcher les maïgouins de Donc, Assurer des à la différentes places de l'on pour mettre son son et chemise qui est longue marche et um, longue pants pour protéger le corps. On peut ça servir à un repellent si vous regardez qui est calté pour empêcher ma gueule mordre. Ça est important. C'est tout bas même ça fait. Mais nous pouvons faire tout bas ensemble comme on dit. On peut garder à ce pas juste protéger le corps nous from ma gueule mordre nous mais pour garder qui m'a nous a détruit ces places-là, ces maïgouins qui ont multiplié ces places-là, qui ont bridé et qui ont fait des maïgouins. C'est ça que nous devons garder pour. Si nous avons détruit ces sources-là, ça nous a dit que nous ne pouvons pas faire des longs livres avec son son, parce que nous avons détruit les maïgouins avec ces places-là qui ont vécu. Donc so, c'est un appel pour tous les simplicien pour nous travailler ensemble. Parce que la maladie, ce n'est pas une maladie qui a respecté les gens. C'est une maladie nous tous un risque. Puis des démons certains c'est moi qui tombe malade avec dengue. Parce que malgré un mois de moins, malgré être malade là, il passe il bat moins. Nous tous chargés de malade ça là. C'est pour ça nous tous n'importe quoi démarche pour protéger corps nous et famille nous. Service santé qui est responsable pour diverses maladies au ministère de santé cette fois-ci. Ça, c'est Primary Health Care qui a informé le public que les cliniques pour maladies qui ont avalé seulement les mercredis depuis 8 heures du matin à ces communes pour le septembre 2020. Le 2 septembre, c'était à l'église SDA en Denry. Le 9 septembre, c'était à l'église SDA en Denry. Le 16 septembre, c'était à l'église SDA en Denry. Le 23 septembre, c'était à l'église SDA en Denry. Le 30 septembre, 
wellness center a vie fort tout moun ki ka ni bise service de traitementier ka ni pou pote mas a sofi jay yo ek pou obey si spedistas ek avayo an twa facilite a yo supoze lave la men yo en ben servi sanitizer ek se kosa nou atwa bout nouvel la mou ka remesye o tan pou ka gade mou ka ba yon invitasyon pou jounen pi mou an konsidye konsevi la vi nan yon pou se twa lot nouvel a kweyol afri sa mou ka vye pou se twa ou Jesse. Merci, Appeal Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I am Jesse Leons signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.